Hello, Drummers and Other Creatures. This is part three of my little series introducing you to the joys of jazz drumming, by which I mean the dang, dang, a dang, dang, a dang, spang, a lang, walk the dog, all of that good swinging stuff. I, I think you might call that just straight ahead jazz drumming. I'll go with that anyway. In part one, we looked at how to play the ride cymbal pattern with the hi-hat foot. In part two, we looked at how to comp a little bit with the snare drum, some basic patterns to know. And in this video, we're going to look at playing the same patterns with the bass drums we learned on the snare. And then if things are going well, we're gonna combine the bass and the snare. What am I talking about? Here's a little demo. Maybe I dropped in a few naughty bits there. I'm, I'm not sure. I'll find out when I watch this back. Anyway, before blah, what happened to my lips? Before we proceed, this is this is my reticence to market myself. Before we proceed with the bass drum shenanigans and all the other stuff we're going to look at, I just wanted to let you know that I am a drum teacher and I exist in the virtual world of Zoom or Skype or whatever. And if you find that you enjoy what you're watching here and you like the way I present ideas and, and you feel like you can learn from me, please feel free to check out my contact details in the description box below and uh, get in touch with me and see if you'd like to have a lesson or two. I might be able to help you sort something out that you've been trying to work on. There you go. Otherwise, if you'd just like to make a little contribution to the cause, you can go to the same description box and link to the buy me a coffee thingy bob and uh, buy me a coffee. Enjoy if you feel like doing that. I will be very, very grateful uh, to anyone who feels like doing that. It makes everything seem worthwhile to be a little bit appreciated. Anyway, moving on. Let's see what we can do to get the bass drum working with our swing pattern. In the previous video, I talked about how we had two basically um, easy to digest, I guess, positions to play the snare comping, and we're gonna do the same with the bass, as I said. First one is in the gap between the dang and the gadang. So if we have dang, dang, gadang, dang, gadang, we've got this little gap. Dang, dang, gadang, gang, gadang, dang, gadang, dang, gadang, dang, gadang, dang, gadang. Dang, ga, dang. And that's where we're going to place our first bass drum note. Now, as I pointed out in the uh, previous video, we're going to play the snare a little bit snappy, but light. We don't want to make too much noise because the snare and the bass comping is kind of subservient to the cymbal, which is playing the main groove, the main rhythmic element. So we're going to do the same here with the bass. I'm going to keep my heel down and I'm going to keep the beater fairly close to the pedal. I'm not going to make a huge amount of noise with the thing. We're not auditioning for Metallica, not yet. So I'm going to play quite lightly. Here we go, in the gap. Now, for some of you, even if this is the first time you're doing it, you might find it reasonably straightforward to insert that bass drum note in between the, the hand strokes that we're playing. Um, but in case that's not coming straight away for you, you can try and break it down a little bit and get a feel for the coordination in a sort of little zoomed in way. So when we're in the gap, we've got dang and gadang. Again, dang, dang, oh. What did I do? Yeah, I am right. Dang, dang, ga, dang, dang, ga, dang, dang, ga, dang. That's the position there. So I might try and play the ride cymbal. Just get a feel for that.
can we get that to work at a really slow speed? Very often, that's what we need to do with anything that introduces new types of coordination. So break it all down to little chunks. One more for good luck. It's after the, the dang, dang, uh, dang, uh, dang, uh, okay. Maybe you even need to add the hi-hat foot really slowly as well. Maybe you have to do that for five minutes before it starts working for you. me and then you can speed it up again and try and get it flowing a, a slightly more you know, groovy tempo if you like next we have the ga of the gadang so we had the bass drum in the gap, dang, uh, dang, ga, dang, uh, right? This time, oh, I can't do it verbally, can I? We've got dang, dang, ga, dang, dang, ga, dang, dang, ga, dang, dang, ga, dang, okay? And the same thing applies. You might be able to play the uh, ride pattern comfortably and just add the bass drum to the whole thing it's quite a good idea if you sing it for a little bit and, and try and get your mind aware of where it's going to be. Dang, dang, ga, dang, dang, ga, dang, dang, ga, dang. Obviously this one, it's not in the gap, it's coincident with the ga of the gadang. So you may find that if that doesn't flow straight away, again, surgically analyzing and working it out is a great idea. With anything that you're learning, I think this is something that a lot of people miss, which is instead of trying to conquer an entire pattern at once, um, just zoom in on the little bits that are challenging, work those challenges out and then put it back into the bigger picture. So we're going ga dang with the bass drum on the ga. Okie dokie. Now, once you've established that you can comfortably play either of those ands, the gap between the dang and gadang, or the ga of gadang, you can start moving it a little bit more and maybe try and see if you can play each one, but say a series of four or eight bars and, and swap between the two. And just kind of confirm to yourself that both of those are feeling really nice, neat, easy and relaxed to play. Lovely jobbly. Next, what we're going to do is try and put all those ands together 
in series. So we'll play continuously the gap between the dang and gadang and then the g of gadang, like so. Now, with any luck, if you followed the other two videos as well, you should be able to put together a combination of being able to play snare drum comping on the ands and bass drum comping on the ands. You should, you know, work towards being nice and competent with both of those things. Next, what we'll do is let's play a little bit of the first, the gap between the dang and gadang. Um, on the bass and then a little bit on the snare and just work those two between the bass drum and the left hand, my left hand, between the bass and the snare basically. Likewise, we'll do it with the, the other and, with the and of two and of four, which is the g of the gadang, a little bit on the snare, a little bit on the bass. And then once you can do that, you can come up with any number of combinations um, just to test yourself, to, to get yourself used to being able to play essentially any of the ands on the snare or the bass. So you can come up then with the all the ands option, and do say a bar on the snare, a bar on the bass or something like this. do two hands on the snare, two hands on the bass. And then alternate the hands between the snare and the bass. And finally, once you've worked on all of that until your hands and feet are happy to coordinate all those options, make sure that you have a good old improvise. You can actually improvise at any stage, at any, any part of this if it feels comfortable or even if it doesn't. Have a go at improvising. Don't, don't be afraid to do that. Make a horrible mess. Uh, it's all part of the brain's process of, of learning how to do this stuff. And we're, we're trying to get freedom so we can just do it. So always improvise at any stage. But once you've got the hang of this and you know that you can play any of those, the gap in between and then the gut of the gadang, um, just try and then freely improvise it. Now, in terms of the sort of musical habits of the way this style is played, you're probably going to play a little bit more snare than bass. So um, 
keep that in mind, but I'm going to just improvise with this idea. Now, trying to freely play the snare drum and the bass drum on the ands as I like, and uh, as I did before, let's do a chorus of uh, Bye Bye Blackbird. And that's it. You can play swing. It's not over yet, though. I'm going to do another couple of videos giving you just a little bit more of a taster of what you need to do to be able to play jazz drums. Bear in mind that getting all of this together probably takes more than the 15 minutes or so that uh, each one of my videos uh, contains. But, you know, stick with it. If you persevere with this stuff and you feel like you want to learn it, you can learn it. You can get good at jazz drumming. Uh, people of all ages start the drums and can do all this stuff. You do not have to be a virtuoso. That's the important thing. Really try and, you know, if you love this style of music especially, try and enjoy yourself. Get into the swing feel of the cymbal. That's the most important thing. Take your time. Persevere and you'll be able to play whatever you like, really. So that will do for now. I think it's time for you to go off and practice. <laughs>